Hi, I'm Brian Moran, founder of Government CIO. Welcome to Government CIO Magazine. Our intention is to move all of our sites, including DHS.gov, to the public cloud. So that's one example. Another is um, on the private cloud, and we do run a private cloud capability out of our two enterprise data centers. And uh, examples of that, uh, probably the most notable one, uh, would be our email as a service offering. Uh, we are piloting that offering here at headquarters, and our intention is to move FEMA and CBP and all the rest of the headquarters uh, to that service here this fiscal year. That would be more than 100,000 users that we will migrate to our own internal private cloud capability emails a service. And it's priced just as if we went to a public cloud service. So we're buying it, if you will, by the mailbox. And we're not, if you will, administering any of that. We're just buying that service level agreement for what we need for email. The reason we're keeping it as a private cloud capability within our own data centers is because of the security concerns. We, we have a lot of sensitive information uh, including law enforcement sensitive information that rides across our, our email system. Another good example of success is uh, SharePoint as a service. Again, private cloud offering by the end of this calendar year. So with, by December of this year, we'll have more than 70,000 people leveraging that SharePoint as a service offering. Well, I, I think, Bill, it's, it's been mainly about innovation within the service offerings themselves, right? So how do they provide a quality of service that meets our requirements at a price point um, that's, that's highly competitive? I, I, I would pick up on this. You know, one of the things I was concerned about, uh, because of the sensitivity of a lot of our data, whether we would be able to get the kind of price points uh, in our own private cloud services that you could get out on the public cloud, right? So we benchmark that. One of the nice things about these cloud-based services is that they're relatively easy to benchmark, right? I mean, a mailbox is a mailbox is a mailbox as far as email goes. I mean, you may have some differences around availability and the size as far as your memory. But generally, I mean, they're, they're pretty easy to benchmark against. And what we have found is probably because of our scale and the, our buying characteristics as far as typically are buying for hundreds of thousands of users. We do have scale, and we're able to get price points and service quality that is the same as what we could do or very similar to what we could do when we go out in the public cloud. So right now we're comfortable keeping those, uh, a lot of those services in our own private cloud because we're able to get those price points. Um, that being said, and one of the, the things I'm really excited about with these offerings is that it should, over time, enable even more competition. And I'm a big believer in government trying not to get locked in to any one vendor for any too, for too long of a period. Um, it, I think it's just better. I mean, these things are uh, evolving quickly. In two or three years from now, the service levels, the price points, I'm sure will be dramatically different in some of these offerings. We want to make sure that DHS can take advantage of that. So this idea that we can have, if you will, a, a foot in a private cloud offering, but also one in leveraging the public cloud, I think will help engender that, that, uh, that competition, which also then engenders innovation, which you asked about. And I think that's the flip side of the, the, the last question, right, which is I want to engender competition, but in order to have that, I've got to be able to move my services, right? And you bring up an excellent point, and one of the things that we're, that issue of interoperability or movement around cloud service providers, together with the security issue, are probably the two big things we're concerned about. Uh, on the interoperability side, um, you know, NIST is really looking hard at this point. I mean, how do you set standards so that there is interoperability amongst cloud service providers for certain types of cloud services that would enable us to uh, relatively quickly uh, change service providers. Um, I think that's something that will evolve here over the next couple of years. Um, 
I think, again, though, the incentive is there for the cloud service market to move forward to offer that. And so I, I think we'll have issues here over the next couple of years, but I'd say within two or three years, many of these issues will, if you will, uh, be solved. We're looking at generally, and, and this is a, a generalization now, but 8 to 10 percent savings in these infrastructure services. Um, as a general rule of thumb, obviously it varies greatly depending on what you're looking at. Um, examples, FEMA's doing much, much better in their, in their email because uh, they, they frankly had an antiquated system, right? So they were overpaying, if you will, on their previous legacy system vis-a-vis -vis what they're paying now. So they saw dramatic reductions. Um, but to, and so it will vary case by case. But we are very comfortable with stating that as we move forward and leverage these cloud-based services for commodity IT, as you say, we can promise uh, 8 to 10 percent savings. Uh, I don't know if I can say that specifically. Um, we at DHS are committed to uh, retraining our workforce, our federal workforce. If there are jobs that, if you will, that are lost because we've gone to a commoditized IT or cloud-based service where we no longer need to do that work, uh, we are committed to retrain those individuals. And uh, we don't see any issues to date in, in being able to do that. I don't anticipate that will be an issue for us um, because I think it's the right thing to do. And, and frankly, we need that IT talent. It's not like we're looking to reduce our IT workforce. Uh, we're looking to uh, take that IT workforce that maybe is doing commodity IT work and leverage them into work that I think is higher leveraged, working closer with our customers to better meet their mission and business needs.